I look exactly the same as my previous video? Yes, because it's too hot and I'm not gonna change. So we're gonna pretend that I look different. Either way, don't I look like <laughs> the same 90% of the time? <sighs> I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Moody Reads where I talk about books and things and today we're doing another chaotic wrap up you know why because I got a lot of chaotic energy happening in my body right now and I, I, I want to like embrace it we're gonna embrace the chaos also look at how cute this looks look at how like I dressed up the house for you guys I even got a little letter board so cute I love it drinking the same water also, if you can hear my fan, I tried to turn it off for half of the other video. Child. <laughs> that was a hard one. So, we're going to keep the fan on. I apologize profusely if um, you can hear it, but it's either that or I melt. And um, I'm too young to melt. Like, no. So, let's get started. So, in... Um, July was the slumpiest of the slumpiest months, but even though it was a very slumpy month I still got through nine books, which by the way if you are on booktube It kind of skews your like idea of what a reading slump is or like what a bad reading month is because reading nine I'm sorry ten books in one month is crazy like my husband is like how do you call that a reading slump like that is no nobody reads 10 books in one month and is like oh my god i didn't read at all <laughs> so yeah also most of the books that you're gonna see i did read through audiobook because again it's like 40 degrees and that's like a hundred degrees cell no no that's not a hundred degrees celsius that's like a hundred degrees fahrenheit and the last thing i do i want to do is sit down and read physical books let me take my water. Oh god, that feels so good. Like I said in my last vlog, this is like a reminder. Never come to Madrid in the summer. It's a bad idea. Go to like the beachy places because... Anyway, let's get on with the wrap up. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> you know what's coming. I don't think you're ready to go see it. I'm just to do it Oh, I love Beyonce. Anyway, all right, the first three books I want to talk about are The Tropic of Serpents by Marie Brennan and also The Voyage of the Basilisk by the same author and In the Labyrinth of Drakes by the same author. Now, these are books two, three, and four of the five book series that is the memoirs of Lady Trent. Now I did talk about the memoirs of Lady Trent in my past wrap up and this is basically the fictional story of an explorer and um, uh, scholar of dragons in the Victorian English time. These books are amazing. I binged them. They're so good. I also mentioned them in my female and female uh, friendship uh, video that I posted on um, Friday, last Friday. I will link that up here also. And I just really love these books. These books are about exploring. They're about a daring woman daring to be herself and being unapologetic about it and the romance in this i'm like i'm like in love with the romance in this like you see this i'm like in love with it so i don't want to spoil what the series like which what every single one of these books is just know that in every book lady trent is trying to find out more and more about dragons and also about the use of their bones because in apparently um these dragon bones they decay very very fast but if you find a way to preserve them they are the strong is they're stronger than steel they're like what's it what's that one captain american's shield or something that that was a very i hate those movies but anyway <laughs> so you know they're like titanium or, or i'm very i'm not gonna continue with these <laughs> very bad <laughs> analogies but anyway so um she's trying to keep people from finding a way of um preserving dragon bone because that will lead to the extinction of dragons in the end because people will just kill them for their bones unlike what we have done to you know every other animal like 
rhinoceros and elephants. I love this series. I really love it. And I, it speaks to my explorer heart. Like, I feel that I'm an explorer at heart. And I'm just, like, not badass enough to actually go explore. Also, I have a really bad passport because I have a Venezuelan passport. So, it's like going exploring is just not gonna happen. Oh, the chaos. Mm. All right, so what did I read up next? Up next, I read a book that I actually ordered, but that it was out of stock. And I thought, okay, it'll probably get back in stock soon. And I've been waiting two months for it. So in the end, I canceled that order and then I ordered again. And now it's not here, but I did read this book. That was a long intro to The Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. I'm sorry I keep saying Simon Jimenez. His name is probably Simon Jimenez. Now, I kept thinking this was a Latinx author because with that name, Simon Jimenez, girl, I thought he was Latinx and that's my fault and my own like biases, but he's actually half Filipino. So yes, he is a person of color. And this book, five out of five stars. By the way, all of the M M Marie Brennan books, I gave either 4.5 or four stars too. They were amazing. But this book was a five out of five stars. This is the story. How do I even explain this story? First of all, this is the story again about an amazing mother. Like this was the month of amazing mothers. Um, this is the story about a woman who travels through time and because of her, t uh, not through time, through space, but because of her space traveling, she really doesn't age like normal people would. Like it's a little bit like that movie Interstellar where like, you know, one second of them traveling, it's like two years on earth or so. I'm not a scientist. Ask Angela from, uh, uh, the, the what is it the literature and science alliance I'll link her channel up here she knows more about that than I do but basically one day a little boy appears out of nowhere in this place and they give him to this woman because they have to take him to this federation because technically he's like like cargo and then you find out something like a plot twist and there are two timelines like the woman that created space travel and the woman that is taking care of this kid and then those two timelines collide and it's beautiful like if you love becky chambers writing i would definitely recommend that you read this book also all of the like non heteronormative romances i loved it it was so well done it was done in a way where it like kind of it wasn't about the romance and there is no like real romantic element in the main story the the real romantic element is the love of a mother for her child for her adopted child it's so good i really love this book i 100 percent recommend that i gave it five out of five stars go read the Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez, who is a half Filipino man who gave a really cool interview, by the way. That's how I found out that he was half Filipino. And yeah, uh, every character is, is lovable and at the same time flawed. And it's just great. I just, I just love this book. Like this is gonna be one of those books like Born and Dune that I'm just gonna be like pushing on you constantly. So just remember this cover because you're gonna see it a lot so up next i was feeling down and i saw a booktuber talk about a manga that she read that really helped her go through the process of grieving or like um feeling like her cat was ill and she was having issues and she recommended a man and his cat by umi sakurai and this is just look i mean this is my cat, by the way. Like, I don't know if you guys, you have seen my cats. This is one of my cats. And this is the story about a little cat who doesn't get adopted. Basically, they think he's ugly because of his little mark. They say, like, it looks like a booger. And his price keeps going down and everybody treats him really bad. And then along comes this older man and he decides to adopt him. And, you know, he's going through his own stuff, but it's just feel good like this is just adorable like i want to feel good this is it like um i don't want to spoil too much of it but it's just kind of this man learning to love and this cat learning to be loved and it's 
just heartwarming and like a hug and I just it was exactly what I needed at the time that I read it and I rated it five out of five stars because again I'm not rating here for literary merit what I'm rating is whether I liked it or not and I loved this little manga I recommend it it was a little bit expensive the thing with mangas for me is that they are worth as much as let's say like a like a book like the fifth season and they're they're so short and you get through them so fast so i'm not sure i'm going to continue with the series but this was exactly what i needed when i needed it so there you go it's really cute all right what did i read up next oh my god okay mm -hmm. let's talk come here get closer up next i read the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. I was so scared to read this because a lot of people describe this as fantasy and you guys know that I'm not a fantasy girl. That's just not my jam. But this book is definitely not fantasy. This book is dystopian kind of. I would, I would say sci-fi because I'm biased, but boy, did I love this book. Five out of five fucking stars. The only reason I didn't start listening right away to the other books was because I got into like, you know, my whole uh, grieving process with my uncle and everything. So, um, yeah, I loved it. Um, the only thing I will say is that I saw the twist coming. Um, like, the second I read the third, um, like, point of view, I knew what was going on. But that didn't diminish at all the the like wonderful experience of reading this book. Like just because I saw the twist, I like I hate that. I hate it when people are like, oh, because I saw the twist coming, this book was not good. Like it's all about the journey, my friend. And just because you know the end doesn't mean that the middle of it isn't good. So yeah, I love this book. This book, um, you you know, it's about a woman whose husband kills her son and then he kidnaps their daughter and he leaves and while this is happening a fifth season which is basically like the end of the world and in this world this happens often uh comes upon them and she is like forced to leave town and just search for her daughter while the world is ending and again the month of incredible mothers and there are other characters in the story like we follow different timelines there's another little girl who she has the power of like in this world we have people that have special powers to like uh control the earth and uh we follow a little girl that gets taken in and then we follow another woman so we follow a bunch of people and all of them are amazing and um it's just such a good book like i can't believe have, i had never read this book this is such a good book five out of five stars and if you and when you see my mm, august tbr you'll see that i've planned to finish this series in august because i'm so like chef's kiss about it love it i read it I'm, I'm i'm talking to you read it it's amazing i can see why everybody loves nk jemison like her writing like when i read brandon sanderson I was expecting to feel what I felt when I read N.K. Jemisin, but I didn't feel that with Sanderson, but I did feel it with Jemisin. Let's talk about the next book I read, because the next book I read was a really big disappointment for me, but it wasn't because the book was bad. In fact, I rated it pretty high. Like, I rated it a 3.5 or 4 stars, and that is Rosewater by Tate Thompson. Now, this book is sci-fi. But I was expecting this book to be a eco-fiction sci-fi in the vein of Jeff Vandermeer, and that was my fault, <laughs> not the author's fault. Um, this book is actually about, it's more of a pol political police drama than an actual like sci-fi drama. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but basically this book is about, it's, in, it's set in Nigeria and we follow again various timelines about this guy who has basically telepathic powers and um, he gets like caught up in a government thing and, and it, it was very confusing for me and I just kept expecting it to turn into bio like I'm sorry about I kept expecting it to turn into ego fiction and it never did and it was like it was not my cup of tea so I actually don't plan on following on with this series 
but not because the series is bad or not because the writing is bad it's simply because it's just not my taste but if that if this is your jam if you really like that political police drama uh intrigue that kind of stuff then definitely pick up this book you will really 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 like it the writing is amazing and everything is good it's just not my it's just not the book for me next up i picked up on my kindle Young <laughs> Jungle. I can never say that together. Jungle by Josie Ginsberg. Now this is the true account of a man who gets stranded in the jungle because of a bunch of stupid decisions. Like they, <laughs> everybody in this book just makes fucking stupid ass decisions. And then it's like, oh, so you got stranded in the jungle. So it was <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the truth. In the beginning, I was having a really hard time with this book because I was like well, that's what happens when you make these decisions that are not smart, you know? <laughs> like, I was so pissed off at the narrator. But what's really amazing about this book, first of all, there aren't a lot of survival books based in the jungle, in the, in the, like, in the Amazon jungle. So that was really cool. It's also by an Israeli author because he's an Israeli man, and this is a true story. I actually read this for my movie, book to movie adaptation project, so there is a movie about it. With Daniel Radcliffe playing the role of an Israeli man, we're not even gonna get into that. But what I found amazing about this book is the fact that I realized that I would not survive in the jungle because I'm like a really negative person, and this man survived on will alone. Like, like it was like, there was no way he was gonna survive, and he did, just because of sheer willpower. He had no training, he had no idea what to do in the freaking jungle. And then he actually survives. I mean, this is not a spoiler, he writes the book, you know, he's, he's alive. <laughs> but it, it, how he manages to survive is what I think draws you into the book. And for, I think the first half of the book is a little bit boring. And also, you keep constantly being like, turn back, do not do this. Also, I will warn you of the word Indians being used in this book. As a Latin American, I don't appreciate that word. Um, but, you know, I, I, I can't represent all Native Americans. And uh, I just don't appreciate it when people use Indians to describe Native Americans. So, you know. But anyway, um, I ended up enjoying the book. I gave it four stars. It's actually really good. But yeah, it's just like most of it is like, but why are you doing that? That's a stupid idea, you know, uh, until the end where it's like, well, uh, man, I mean, your mental ability to to believe in your own survival is amazing. So that in that case, I would recommend that you read this book and we'll see how I feel about the movie when I do my book to movie adaptation uh, project wrap up. For this month or, or next month i don't know when i'm gonna do it but we'll we'll see we'll see what happens and then the second to last book i read this month i actually read it on our commute not our commute our road trip to where we were going to the beach and that is the only good indians by stephen graham jones this is a horror book that you know that video i made about haunting books that are gonna stay with you forever this, my friend, is gonna go on that list for the next time I make this because I finished it and I was like, okay, okay. And then the book just kept like creeping up on me and like reminding me and I was like, wow, like it's amazing. I really, really enjoyed, first of all, this is on, on Voices, so again, the title, I don't appreciate the word Indians, but I am not somebody to tell an person that identifies with this word what they're supposed to identify as you know i'm not that person i personally don't like it but you know whatever um this is a really amazing horror uh book it's about a group of friends that killed a bunch of elk more than they could eat more than they could carry and they just left them there and it's basically the story of the spirits of nature coming back to get you and it's really it's got it's got such a, such a like almost paint by the numbers i know that sounds bad but listen like paint by the numbers like old stephen king old horror feel but in a fresh new light because it's own voices of um native american and i learned a lot about native american reservations and i like that 
there's some humor put through the book and I like that this man doesn't shy away from saying like, you know, uh, how Native Americans in the reservation are today and how, I don't know, I just learned a lot about Native Americans today and like, th like getting this idea of what I would imagine the reservation to be out of my head and uh, actually being there and and what it means for them to marry outside of, of Native American people and you know they talk about alcoholism they talk about you know all of these things that happen within reservations and how they themselves feel about it and of course there's an elk woman try to kill them so I loved this book I love this book I, I am very confused this is definitely not a summer book this is definitely a winter book because a lot of it happens during the winter so I think I was having a hard time like connecting because I was like fucking hot as balls and I was reading about snow and shit so I would recommend you read this during the winter but dude five out of five stars however I don't recommend the audible version of this book I don't think the uh, the um what's it called what's the name the person reading it the person reading it because I can't think of the word I don't think he had the right intonation for it and then at the end of the book there's an interview with the author and I wish the author had read the book because his voice would have been perfect for this kind of like scary slow um very like tragic story so i don't know that's just a tidbit but the book itself is amazing five out of five stars i love it i'm so glad that i bought it before my book buying ban <laughs> because i really 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 love this book and this is definitely going in like my top five horror books that i have ever read and the last book i read this month is how to be a good creature by simon montgomery i gave this five out of five stars this is just the story of simon montgomery uh, telling us about the creatures that have made her a good creature throughout her life as an explorer as a nature writer and it's sweet because it talks about like dogs and emus and 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 pigs and pets not only like wild animals but what each animal that she has encountered in her life well not each of them but you know what these animals these 13 animals that she has encountered in her life had taught have taught her about her human condition and about how she can be a better human and i just love simon montgomery and i i really needed to read about these beautiful animals like um for example here she's talking about a pig that she that her husband adopted for her when i think her father died i remember and she says he taught us how to love how to love what life gives you even when life gives you slops and then there's a little picture of her piggy and i don't know i i really needed this book by the end of the month i could i, I couldn't bring myself to read anything that wasn't like kind of sweet and easy to read so that's it those are the 10 books i read in the month of july it's been not the worst reading month but um seeing as i was reading 20 books again i think booktube skews your idea of what is a lot or what is a little you know when it comes to books and reading and i think 10 books is pretty damn good so i'm gonna pat myself on the back for that one it was a good reading month it was an emotional month for me but you know what um I'm, I'm glad that i have reading to get me through it because otherwise i would have been just all alone <laughs> well not all alone but you know um this was a nice distraction from everything that was going on so i'm gonna oh, did you see this my sansa i love it i found it again and i was using it all through the month this is like my favorite bookmark so that's what you were seeing there but anyway um uh, without any further ado I bid you adieu with a reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesday, Fridays and a thank you for anybody that watches this, these videos, that comments, that likes, that subscribes, that just listens to me talk for like a really stupidly long time about books because my husband tunes out <laughs> as he should. 
So yeah, uh, thank you so much and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye guys.